that's pretty fast. That's pretty nice. Hi, I'm Lou with another episode of My Car Story. And today we've got a great car for you. We're in the western suburbs of Chicago. I'm with Tony. Tony, your last name? Maneo. Tony Maneo. And this car you've had since how long? Since 2019. 2019. What year make and model is this one? 1965 Impala SS. Super Sport, Super yeah. Sport. With a 396. So let's take a look at this one. Now, come right alongside me, Tony. Now my first car was a 1965 Bel Air, so I have kind of a interest in these cars. Anytime you have your first car, it always kind of is magical to you, but it was not this good. This car is about as good as a 65 Impala can get. It's the SS, you'll only see Impala there on the grill. You'll see it on the tail, but as you look on the side, come on along with me, you don't see Impala you see the word super sport. Now I'll just let you take that in for a moment. <laughs> yeah. Tony, why this car out of all the cars in the world? It was the same car my brother, my oldest brother had in high school. So your oldest brother uh, had this, had a car like this in high school. You wanted to find one, your brother passed away. Correct. So I'm sorry to hear about that. But uh, what a great uh, tribute to be driving a car like this that brings to mind your brother. And was your brother one who definitely helped you be a car guy? Yes. Yeah, so this is kind of the tribute car to the brother. What's your brother's name? Lewis. Lewis. <laughs> Look at that. So a tribute from Lou to Lewis. And your brother has done you right. Lewis right now is smiling in that garage in heaven looking at this as I am. <laughs> Let's open the hood, shall we? Sure. We've got the sun on it. So how did your brother get you into some cars? Because that's what he used to do when, when uh, I was a kid and I used to hang around him and watch him work on cars. You would watch him work on cars and then you became a mechanic. Correct. Because of him. Yes. The tribute to Lewis car. Look at this. Where did you find this one? Um, I found this in the city of Chicago. A gentleman was going to restore it, and um, it was just needed too much work, so he decided not to do it. But it was all there. It was complete. How long did this take you to restore? This was another year car. It took me a year. Took you a year. You are unbelievable, because when you get on a topic, it doesn't stop. I'll, I'll just say this, this car was judged at a very high level, as you can see, with everything on this car taking us right back to 1965. Wow. Even, look at this. I'm gonna take my time on this engine. How do you get it to this level? Lots of time. Lots of time. I mean, like for example, these stickers, like that one. How do you determine, and even like, if you look down here, you know, that that connects to that. These things could have all have been missed. But every bolt, how, how do you, where do you get the information from? I, mostly the internet. I just look all over the internet, look at cars that are original, that are untouched, and yeah, and uh, go from there. And I pretty much can visualize, see where the stuff goes, and um, plus manuals. I have all the manuals on the vehicle, and that, those have a lot of picture orientated, um, you know, whereabouts everything goes. So yeah, I can see you're sentimental that. with this car too. Oh yeah. Yeah, this this car gets you a little humble, a little sentimental, because. Usually Tony's got the big cheery smile, but when he looks at this car, I can see it reminds him of his brother. Look at even, I'm gonna show you some details. Like look at that. I mean, my goodness, the motor mounts, everything. This is a time capsule. Tell me what this is. That is Pleasure Ride. Pleasure ride. Give me an idea what pleasure so ride is. So back means. in the days, these cars. Pleasure ride, I thought was like a really hot girl next to you. Um, back in the days, people that 
uh, bought these cars would put like a trailer hitch or they'd have a family of five or six people. Yeah. And the car would bottom out. Yeah. So there was a add-on that they would put which was called pleasure rides. So it's kind of like your new vehicles now with air suspension okay. automatically adjust. Yeah. Well inside the car which we'll, I'll show you is when the car's running you can add pressure to raise the car so it would still stay level. Is that right? Well let's fire this one. We'll turn it around and show the trunk and treats. This one's going to have a great trunk and treat section. Now was this the highest 396 horsepower? No. Okay, what was what was above 325? 425. 425. Okay, great. Was that a dual quad? Nope. Okay, wow. No, single carburetor. Wow, okay. I do actually have a four and a quarter horsepower motor. This one? No, oh, oh another one. Okay, have, all right. I, I have it. <laughs> we laugh. Wow, that's smooth. Let me listen to the exhaust. Can you step on the brakes for a second? Just for grins, throw it in reverse. We'll get all six lights going. There we go. There's all six lights. All right, we'll shut that. We'll put it back in park. We'll show you the back here in a second. Well, let me let, let you listen to it. You've got dual exhaust there. Tony, give it a rev. Fire breathing dragon. One more time. <laughs> We're gonna knock all that moisture out in the ride in a second, but we'll turn it around for you first. That we turn it around, and I just wanted to give you the Impala back end. Now you've got six tail lights here, the Biscayne, and I even believe the Bel Air might have had four on each side. I don't think it had the reverse lights, but you've got two tail, as we showed you, one reverse. And this is the only other Impala badge with the SS on this car. So let's open the trunk. We've got some trunk of treats. And if I recall, the gas goes here. Correct. Yep, like so. Now, as I brush over these trunk and treats, if you'd like to see the details for those of you who love the trunk and treats, I'm not going to disappoint you. We're going to take our time and go through each one of those in great detail. So that'll be in the body of the description of this video. You can see all of those brochures in detail. But for now, we're going to keep the video moving with this outstanding trunk. And we're going to go towards the interior. We'll close that. May I open it, Tony? Yeah. Thank you. So you've got your GM badge there, your door sill here. And the SS has a nice carpet, that logo, power windows. You're greeted by the body by Fisher, as you can see. The seat belts, the seat belts here, the window back there, the nice design. The all-important Impala. And I just want to show you something, just so I don't miss it. If you had air conditioning from the factory, you had that right there. That air conditioning badge. And this one's got, is it a power antenna? No. Or a regular antenna. But I like that it's in the back. That's cool. They put that, they did that on the SSs. Just on the SSs. Okay, good to know. So let me show you the interior from here. We'll show you the interior here. And let's get a deeper dive view. Now this definitely reminds me of my 65, except it didn't have those vents because I didn't have air. And I didn't have the Impala there but it did look plain Jane like that. Very, very nice. It did not have this super cool console either with the working clock, the nice SS badge. And I'm gonna try to get this from the back of the car, like what it looks like all the way 
up the center. And that nice little slap stick too. Tony, tell me a little something about these mats because you told me something about them. Yeah, so these are original mats from 1965. I had found them, um, but they're so old that the oil actually is coming out of them. As you can see with the glistening of the light. Wow. This is quite the car. The nice thing too is you're greeted by the Impala really spaced out across the front there. Nice. Your ashtrays on both sides and that great two-prong horn. All right, let's, uh, I think the only thing we got left to do is we gotta, we gotta take this one for a ride. All right, sounds good. Let's, let's do, do it. it. If we start our ride and you see the word Lou, you might think this is my shirt. No, this was actually Lewis, his brother's shirt when he was working in this marina and they turned it into a pillow and the pillows sit in the back of the car like so, like so. So I got to tell you, Tony, you are a great brother. Thank you. And he must have been a great brother. Absolutely was. Yeah, that is great then when brothers have that kind of camaraderie. Just fantastic. So what a wonderful tribute to your brother. And uh, again, I'm sure he's looking down from the garage in heaven and smiling. And we'll just show him the ride. It's not heaven, but it's pretty gosh darn close. Perfect day on the ride. So after you finish this one, was it more sentimental or was it more I'm happy it's over? Uh, it was more sentimental than anything. Yeah. I mean, and, you know, happy it's over. You know. What's your feeling when you're driving? Ah, uh, him. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. What, what brings him out in this car? Because where you're sitting, I was only nine years old. Yeah, okay, so I'm in your seat. <laughs> right. <laughs> and you're the driver now, all right. You're, you're showing him that you're being responsible. Let's again, just take a look at this great road that we're on. It's nice when the uh, it's nice when it's uh, a chance to share your brother's car. What's the reaction when you're at car shows with this? I get a lot of reaction from the car because it's a '65 Impala with a 396, and what people really are impressed at is air conditioning and power windows. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's the full package. This car is not missing anything. I even see this little vented radiator here, as I see. But yeah, it actually was a factory speaker. Factory speaker. Got it. Yeah, that, this this car has everything connected to it, which is really, really cool. What, what's this right here? That's a vacuum gauge. Vacuum gauge for the manifold. Check that out. Oh, go ahead. Do that again. Oh, yeah. I see that. That just runs great. It's a great car. Well, first of all, Tony, it's a real privilege to be riding in shotgun and your brother's car that you're driving uh, and giving him such a great tribute and such a fine restoration job. I'm just really happy for you and I know he's really happy. Thanks for being at my car store. Thank you. Appreciate you having me. My pleasure. I got a little bonus footage for you if you stuck around. Tell me, and this is from the factory. This is that pleasure lift. Show, show us how this works. So basically when you have a uh, a bunch of people in the car and you need to level it because it's so far in the ground you would push this button in there um i think i remember now turn the dial turn the dial and see that yeah that runs off the engine off a vacuum and it turns a little compressor and builds up the pressure where's the compressor in the trunk the compressor's underneath the left hand fender oh, okay um, i showed you yeah 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 thing. i remember right. so when you get to your pressure it just basically levels the car so you can have you know five people in the car will sit level and then if once you get the people out if you want to get at that pressure you would re release it see take the pressure out of the back look at that and what do they call that pleasure ride pleasure ride very cool 